So welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to our very first Barclays Lunch and Learn. Who, for those who are online, thanks for joining us and for those joining us in the Academy, welcome. Uh, my name's John Barclay and I'm the Founder and Managing Director at Barclays for those who don't know me. And uh, this is our very first Barclays Lunch and Learn and we have the plan to do many of these and the topic that we want to be talking about is leading with influence. And when you think about how big a topic that is, uh, we're not going to be able to cover it all in a very short 45 minute to 50 minute session. So I hope and plan to continue this conversation over the next few months and look forward to you joining us. Being a very quick session, only an hour, we're not going to be able to cover it all in detail. So what I'm really planning to do is just to start to socialise some some models and some thoughts around leading with the influence, maybe dig into one or two of those for today. And then going forward, we'll start to unpack some other areas of leading with influence over the next few lunch and learns. So why are we talking about leading with influence? Well, the reality is the world we're dealing with every single day is getting more and more complex. It's getting more VUCA, as they say. So there's more volatility in the work environments that we have within the industries that we work in, they're just becoming more and more volatile in nature. There's so many different things going on that are challenging. Obviously the challenges we're facing are becoming more and more uncertain in nature. The future that we're having to work in is becoming more and more uncertain in, na in, in nature as well. What we have to deal with is becoming more and more complex. You know, we're getting way more adaptive challenges facing us day in and day out as leaders. And as our role, and we're looking at those sorts of things happening in our world are becoming more ambiguous as well. So when we think about that and our people and the people that work for us, that can be a really uncertain place. It can be really uh, you know, stressful environment. It can have a lot of psychosocial risk impact in regards to the way people are operating in your work environment. So our role as leaders, especially if we're gonna lead with influence is to try and help people make sense of this more VUCA world that we're dealing with. And that's what leading with influence is really important as a skill for, for a leader. So let's sort of unpack a couple of key things around VUCA, because while it talks about volatility and uncertainty and complexity and ambigu ambiguity, we can also look at how we can use that to build strategy so we can think about how we in influence along the way. So a couple of things for us to think about as leaders the more volatile the world becomes, the more important our vision becomes. So the, the better we can get at articulating the future state we're trying to create, what good looks like and the aspiration that we're trying to get to, the more we're able to influence how people think about what's going on around them and stay focused on the journey. So volatility comes with vision. We really need to push the vision to actually counteract the volatility that's happening within our world. When, uncertain, when that uncertainty comes, there's a couple of things we need to think about. We need to seek, seek to understand others. That's really important for us as leaders to start to think about our role. We need to seek to understand what's happening so we're able to work more effectively in influencing others in, in that space. But we also need to help others understand. So our job is to also articulate key aspects of what's going on around us as we learn and we start to see what's happening and what's going on around us as well. So seek to understand others, but help others understand what's important. When we think about complexity, in a perfect world, we help take things and create more clarity. And yeah, we know how difficult that can really be. Um, but trying to make things simplistic in a complex environment is a real key to help influencing people and, and the way they operate uh, in the world that you're having them operate in with your teams and your workplace. So clarity comes with, you know, challenging the way people are thinking and feeling and experiencing things. So coming through that challenging process and starting to work through, are we actually overthinking things? Are we overgoing in places? Can we get back to some clarity? Can we get back to what's important? Is a really great way to help, people, help influence the way people are experiencing the workplace that they're in. And with ambiguity, we want to be agile. So when we think about being agile, there's no better example of that over the last two to three years when COVID hit, you know, how do we actually get agile in, in that space? And it's continuing that. That's a great learning for us around our sphere of influence and leading with influence is how do we actually keep that agility going? Not only for ourselves, 
but then how do we help others be agile? And we really need to engage people as individuals to what they need to be agile in the work environment that, that they're op operating in. So when you think about VUCA, we can think about that in regards to the world we're in, but we can also think about it in regards to the strategies that we can build and how we can actually lead with some influence by having a very clear vision, a very clear purpose and direction that we're heading in, seeking to understand uncertainty, the challenges that are in front of us and help others understand what's important. We can create clarity by actually focusing in on those critical elements and help people stay focused on those, but also engage with people one-on-one -on -one to help them be agile, how they need to be agile in what's going on around them as well. Now, when we actually think about influence, we also need to think about our our relationships and, and our circle of influence. And there's probably a couple of things for us to really be thinking about here in regards to our circle of influence. One is how big is that circle of influence? How big is your network? How big are those uh, relationships? How many of those relationships do you build and keep building and keep growing? So obviously the bigger the circle of influence you have, the more opportunity you have to lead with influence. But let's also be real and say it's the depth of those relationships that matter, right? So you can have lots and lots of contacts and lots and lots of people that you engage with, but leading with influence really comes with the depth of relationship that you're building with people. And it's really important to start to distinguish the difference between the relationships you have around you as either customers or partners. Right? And there's a very clear distinction. So if you think about customer orientation, that's almost servient, right? Come and, clear, come and clear my table, come and take my dishes away, come and solve this, come and move this. So customer orientation actually isn't a very deep relationship with people at all. It's actually quite servient in nature and very surface orientated. We don't really get to know people in deepness. Partnering's different, like when we truly partner with people, and we understand win-wins and we understand each other's value proposition to the relationship and to the situation we're in, then all of a sudden the vision becomes more powerful, right? The, the seeking to understand becomes more effective. The clarity that you can bring becomes more opportunistic based on what it is and your ability to stay agile with each other is really important. So a couple of questions I want you to think about. I really want you to take away from today these two main questions. What does true partnership look like? So if you were to sit around and actually articulate what true partnering looked like with those people that you're trying to build those deeper relationships with, what would be the attributes of those? And really start to highlight what they are. So you can start to define the one thing you could start doing today to bring, to build stronger partnerships with people. Start leading with influence through partnering. If you really want to build those relationships so you can influence more effectively around what's going on around you, that's going to come from the way you partner with people. Let's start sort of thinking about position of influence. So I've talked about circle of influence. Start talking about position of influence. Position of influence determines sort of the shadow you cast. So the more senior we become in an organisation, the bigger the shadow we cast. But the reality of the influence we have further down the chain becomes less and less because we're not having that direct contact, that direct deep relationship with the frontline workforce, for example. What you need to understand is they're still in your circle of influence and you're still going to have opportunities to engage with them. But where your position of influence needs to focus with the deepness of relationship and that really true partnering is with the immediate level below you. So if you want to be able to cascade your vision, cascade the methodology about seeking to understand and getting clarity of understanding and also help people be agile, you've got to help that next level below you be really effective at that. So build deep relationships with your direct reports. So if you're in senior management, spending very quality time with your middle management around what's important, making sure we're aligned, making sure we're being consistent, we understand the vision and the purpose and the direction, that then can allow them to cascade that to the frontline leaders, which then allows them to engage with the employees and we get that consistency through. So you're really increasing your sphere of influence, but you're also doing it with the depth of the partnership that you're building with those around you. Now there's a little bit of a challenge in most organisations. We also have enabling functions. 
So HR teams, training teams, safety function teams, they're all enabling functions. They're generally not reporting to senior leadership or middle management or frontline supervision. We're generally trying to influence them. So our sphere of influence in an enabling function is even bigger, right? So we really need to think about where are those true partnerships happening? So if you're a senior leader in an enabling function, how are you building strong partnerships with senior management to get that alignment through? If you're in that middle tier of an enabling function, how are you building very strong relationships and partnerships with middle management and frontline supervision to be able to help them understand that, in, that influencing position as well? So it's really important to understand your position of influence and where do you need to build those strong partnering relationships with? We can't partner with thousands and thousands of people, but we can influence thousands and thousands of people by building really strong partnerships with the right people. So really understand where those partnerships need to exist. Law of diffusion, a very interesting concept and something we need to think about in regards to the direction or where we put our focus of influence. So when we think about the way people embrace things, and when we want to influence change, for example, and create that momentum through, more often than not, we put our effort into the wrong area. So let me sort of unpack a little bit of this um, sequence of people. So we've got innovators. So about 2.5% of the social environment or the social construct that you'll have in any team are innovators. Now, let's take that as us. We're the ones trying to create influence. We've got something we want to achieve, we've got goals we want to create, or we've got a change that we need to roll out and we will need to influence people with that. So we're the innovators. Then you've got this early group called early adopters. They're generally the ones that are aligned to that vision. So they've generally got a fair bit of alignment to the purpose and they understand the goal and they're, you know, they're pretty quickly aligned and the level of influence is going to be low because you've already got it, right? And then we've got this chasm that actually gets us into the majority of the population. And they're the ones we need to influence because like, it's the majority. That's the group we're trying to get aligned and that's the group that we're trying to get change in. So if you break up the majority into two groups, the early majority, so they're generally the ones that can come on board quite quickly. They're waiting to see what happens. But as they start to see what's happening, they can actually embrace that quite quickly and get on board. The late majority are really waiting to see how that settles and wait to see what's in it for them so they can move through. Laggards generally are gonna find it difficult to get on board at all. And even with the change that you create, even with the influence that you're trying to create, you may never get them on board. And they either choose to come on board or they may choose to leave or they may, may choose to at least accept it and not fight it and actually just allow it to be. So when we think about this, when we're trying to create change, when we're trying to create a situation that we need to influence, who's the most vocal? When we think about who's the most vocal, it's generally the laggards. They're generally the ones in opposition to it. They're generally the ones that have got the most concerns about something. They're generally the ones that have got the most questions. And unfortunately, we tend to put a lot of our focus there. So we tend to try and address all the things that are going on in that laggard space. Now, unfortunately, when we think about our position of influence and our direction of influence, those people will end up arguing the same points again and again and again, and actually start to convince that late majority, right? Because they're the ones that are skeptical, they're the ones that are a bit unsure, and they're not seeing value yet, they're not seeing it work, they're not seeing it succeed. So they actually start to side with the laggards and we get a bigger percentage of the group now against the direction that we're going. And that becomes even more challenging now because we're not trying to just influence this small majority, we're actually trying to in, in influence the, the major majority. So when we're thinking about our direction of influence, we need to embrace these early adopters very quickly. We need to get them on board. We need to make sure they understand what it is we're trying to achieve. So that gives us about 18% of the 17 to 18% of the population already on board very quickly. That gives us the opportunity to hit our tipping point. Now a tipping point comes around that 18 to 20% mark where we're getting momentum, people are starting to see the value, those early majority can see what's happening, they can see how people are embracing it, they can see the outcomes that we're getting from it, then all of a sudden we can move to that 50% mark pretty quickly. Once we've got to that 50% mark or 55% mark, 
that late majority start to go, well, it seems to be working for everyone, so now I can start to embrace it as well. And therefore then they start to come on board. And at some point the laggards either fit into that or they choose to opt out and move on. Another name I give laggards are cave people, citizens against virtually everything. They're the ones that challenge, don't like change, don't like to move forward at all, and they're the most vocal and we shouldn't be putting our effort there. Let them be, they will either fit in or they will move on. So when we think about our direction of influence, we need to focus on the early adopters. Put your energy into those that believe in your vision, believe in your purpose, are prepared to partner with you to actually get that through and actually spend the time making that a success so you can win over the other 68% of the majority. Then all of a sudden you're at your 84% mark and if you think about anything you're trying to do in an organisation, if you can get 84% of your population passionate about it, bought into it, leading it, driving it, owning it, all of a sudden your life, it's done. It's a culture, it's the way we do things around here. You can then start to just monitor that and grow that. Whenever you get new people coming, the majority of the organisation is going to bring them on board for you. You're already going to absorb new people into that environment. So we've talked about sphere of influence or your circle of influence, building those big partnerships, making sure you're building lots of relationships. We've talked about your position of influence, so where you are in regards to le in leadership roles, in regards to senior management, middle management, frontline supervision, or an enabling function. Where's your position of influence and how does that work? When we actually think about social change, when we actually think about embracing people, you've got to think about your direction of influence. Where are you directing your influencing and where are you directing your priority to build those partnerships first? So whenever you've reached those roadblocks, I'll guarantee you it's because you've actually gone to the vocal group, which is the laggards, and you've wasted energy and time trying to build relationships there that aren't going to work anyway, and you've ignored those that would have come on board and now they're against it as well. So really be mindful of where you put your energy and where you put your focus. The last thing I want to talk about, and there's a fair bit to talk about in this one, and to be honest, I'm looking forward to really unpacking more of these over, over the next few series of Lunch and Learns. Leading with influence requires some styles as you're doing this. So no matter what your circle of influence is, no matter what your position of influence is, and when you step into managing that direction of influence, you need to be thinking about the styles that come into this. So the first one, and we've talked about vision as a really key aspect to this, is how are you inspiring people around what you're trying to achieve. Some personalities are great at inspiring people. They're very outgoing, they're very optimistic, they're very positive in nature, they get very passionate, they have lots of energy, and they can easily inspire people around it. Those extroverted traits tend to make it easier for them to inspire people. But if you're an introverted leader, you've got to find it within yourself to get up, be extremely positive and optimistic and passionate about what you're trying to achieve. If you can't bring the energy and the passion to your vision, then how do you expect others to really buy into it? So if you want to actually make that change and start to influence those early adopters and that early majority, you've got to find a way to bring the passion and the energy to what it is you're trying to do. When it comes to seeking to understand and people understanding why you're doing what you're doing and where you're trying to go, if you want to really influence that, it's all about shared purpose. It's all about your thoughts around it, it's your beliefs around it, it's the reason why. So Simon Sinek starting with why is a really important message to think about here in regards to your leading with influence. If you're unable to really embrace and talk about and sit in that space of the why for long periods of time, you are going to struggle to really get that majority understanding what's in it for them. Why would they want to embrace whatever it is that you're trying to achieve? So while you're gonna have passion for your vision, be really positive and optimistic, you need to be able to articulate why it's so important and what's so good about it. When people get into that, they're gonna have some questions, right? They're gonna have some uncertainty. They've probably got their own um, They've probably got their own mindset around it. They've probably got some paradigms around it. And it's important for you to be able to ask really effective questions to get them to start seeing some other possibilities. 
So I don't mean challenge as in challenging them front on and being a challenging person. I mean asking questions that really get to challenge what people are thinking and what people believe and get them to start seeing what's possible. So asking really powerful, open and leading questions to get people to see what's possible here. Think about the possibilities if we could achieve this goal, if we could work through whatever your vision is, whatever that success is, what would that really look like? What would you be achieving? And why would we be doing it differently? And what could we achieve from it? If we could just change one thing, what would that do? So getting people to start thinking about possibilities can be a major change in the way they think and therefore then that majority coming on board quickly. The last one is really about spending time with some individuals. If you want to really increase your leading with influence skill set, it's understanding the value of spending time with individuals. You really need to spend the time understanding how they feel about it, what they think about it, what's coming up for them, what are their concerns, what it's, what's their positivity around it. So it's seeking individuals feedback and, and, and input. Unfortunately, we tend to try and engage the team, the group, and have big group conversations and don't necessarily get the chance to spend time with that majority group one-on-one -on -one to get them to move, or at least those early adopters one-on-one -on -one so they can start to sell the message for you as well. So we call these transformational styles. If you want to uh, lead with influence, you need to think about how you start transforming things. Inspire people around your vision. Influence people around, uh, influence people through what's important, what's the why. Start asking some really powerful questions around what's possible. And don't forget to spend some time with some one-on-one -on -one people, one-on-one -on -one with people, so you can actually have meaningful, deeper conversations with them. So when we think about VUCA, so if you've got volatility, which equals vision, that comes with how well you can inspire and keep people positive and optimistic and passionate about what's happening. Break down that volatility with positivity and passion and direction. When you think about uncertainty and seeking to understand, it actually comes around seeking to understand why we want to do things and how we would want to move through and why we would even want to have these change or why we would even want to start doing some of the things that we wanted to do. And when you think about complexity around clarity, is asking those powerful questions so people can start to challenge their thinking or even their concerns. Some of the stories that we even tell ourselves around change and around the journey that we're on, asking really powerful questions to actually keep that moving through is a really powerful way to start thinking about getting that clarity around where we're going and what we're trying to do. And agility comes from spending time with people one-on-one -on -one to understand how they can adapt and how they can move from the position that they're in to actually embrace that change going through. So just wanted to recap a few key things here. The world we're in right now and the world of the future is just gonna keep being more volatile. It's gonna keep being more uncertain. We're gonna keep finding really complex problems that we need to keep solving. And there's gonna be a lot of ambiguity in what we're dealing with. So I really embrace people to understand, don't fear that. Don't feel like that's just something that's overwhelming us. Really be clear about your vision, your objectives, your goals, whether they're a very small specific thing or whether they're a very big aspirational thing. Be very clear on what you want. To move away from volatility, we must have a very clear direction that people can stay focused on and not get overwhelmed by everything that's going on around us. And just spending time sharing your purpose, talking about what's important to you, and those beliefs really helps people understand why it's really important for us to go into that direction and keep moving forward. So that VUCA world is something we need to keep embracing. Your circle of influence, your circle is really important to understand. Are you building the relationships with the people that you need to be building relationships with? That comes from a bit of a personality trait as well. So you need to be really mindful of your own self here. If you're an extroverted person, you're probably building lots of relationships. You probably, your circle of influence is probably really, really big. My challenge to you is 
how well are you building those deeper relationships with those people? You know, how well are you really building close, deep, meaningful, partnering relationships with people? As an introvert, you probably have quite deep, meaningful, partnering relationships with people, but just not too many. And therefore then your circle of influence is probably quite small. And do you have the main ones that you need? So we need to start stepping outside our comfort zone. If you want to lead with influence, you've got to get outside your comfort zone. You're either going to have to really bring it down and build some deep relationships that may not be natural to you, or you may need to step out and actually build more relationships so you're actually having the influence with the people that you need. Your position of influence is really important to understand two things. The shadow you're casting. The shadow you're casting comes from what you're focusing on and what people perceive you to be valuing. And if you're not sh casting the shadow that's dealing with a VUCA world, then people are gonna still feel really unsafe and they're gonna to start to feel really uncertain and they're gonna feel a little bit disconnected. So you articulating and, and, and sharing a shadow backed up by words and action that gives people certainty and gives people the clarity and, and working through that process so they can actually stay engaged, feel safe, that they can actually communicate and share and talk about what's happening and move forward, that's gonna give you the power of change that you need. And don't forget about your direction of influence. Don't fall into the trap of going to the most noisiest person in the room. Sometimes the most noisiest person in the room is your laggard. They're the ones with a lot of objection. They've got a lot of, you know, reasons to push against it, go and find your early adopters, embrace them, get them on board, get them aligned to your vision and your purpose and what you're trying to achieve and really get them to help you move that forward. Leading with influence comes from the people around us and that's the main thing to remember. Who's around you, who's on the bus with you and how are you driving that bus forward for pe people to embrace it. And I guess the last thing to think about is your communication styles as you're going through that. How well do you inspire people? How well do you share your purpose? How well do you ask powerful questions to get people to see things differently? And how well are you engaging people to seek different in inputs and feedback? So I just wanna open up a bit now for questions. If anyone's got any questions or move forward, I've got a few little things in the back of my mind that I'd like to add to this, but I wanna see what people have got. Questions that help people see possibilities. So, um, they could be, first thing I wanna say is frame up open questions. So the what, how, why type questions are the ones you wanna be trying to think about how you're gonna frame them. So, what would happen if we didn't do something? So that would be a way to get them to see what challenges could be faced by not doing something. If we, if we went forward with this, what do, you, what do you see as a benefit of doing what we're planning to do? What would be something that would help us achieve that? So asking questions to get them to think about either, if we don't do something, what's gonna happen? If we, do, if we do do something, what will happen? And asking those what, how, or why questions are, re are really important. Why wouldn't we want to do it? Right? Why would you actually want to keep doing the same thing we've been doing and getting the same result? How could we do it differently? If the way I'm articulating it is agreeable, but you've got some difference of opinion on how we do it, how do you think we could get to that goal? So just asking those questions are really good ways of doing it. So the main reason why people f forget or maybe drop off what they're doing in regards to leading with influence is they're not looking after themselves. So if you get overwhelmed by the VUCA world, the volatility, the uncertainty, the complexity, um, the ambiguous nature of what you're working with. So if you're struggling with that, you're not gonna be able to lead with in influence. So you need to be able to sit down and process those things for yourself. You need to take the time to get clarity on your vision and clarity on your purpose and clarity on your goals. Because at the end of the day, if you can't be clear on that, 
then you're not going to be able to articulate that well enough for people to move forward with it. So don't forget to invest time in yourself to make sure that when you go out and embrace those early adopters, that you can actually articulate things in a meaningful way. Preparation's key, making sure that you can plan and work, and work your way through that. That was one of the questions that came up in my mind when I'm thinking about how do you lead with influence. It starts with yourself and you really, really need to think about what's going on for you. So VUCA has it's basically an acronym for what's happening in our ever-changing world. So V stands for uh, volatile, so that means there's lots of, lots of things going on around us that's quite high pressure, um, it's quite volatile in nature in regards to you know, market, global change, all sorts of things that are going on. It's, it's quite vo uh, volatile for us in the world right now. Global pandemics are pretty vo volatile as well. Um, you know, the U is about uncertainty. So there's a lot of uncertainty around now. What's going to happen with the market? What's going to happen with, you know, these global relationships and global partnerships? What's going to happen with COVID going forward? Um, what's going to happen in the business in regards to adjusting to different cost restraints as, as inflation's going up? So, you know, uncertainty is a really big one. And then there's complexity. The problems we're dealing with all the time are getting more and more complex in nature in that, let's be honest, as soon as there's people involved in a challenge, it's gonna be complex because people have different beliefs, perceptions, thoughts, ideas, concerns. So sometimes we oversimplify the problem and try and deal with it as a technical issue, which means just fix something, solve something, put something in place and we've solved it, when in reality, they're quite adaptive in nature and we need to unpack the, uh, the nature of that adaptive challenge so we can actually have different strategies to learn and grow from. So that's the C of complexity. Um, and the A is around things being ambiguous. You know, we don't really know things like, there's just not a lot of clarity in what's going on around us. Sometimes we don't get very clear direction. Sometimes we don't actually know what things are happening and why they're happening. You know, there's lots of vacuum in our space at the moment. And I think it's really important for us to understand how do we actually recognize the ambiguous nature of our world so oh that's a big challenge isn't it probably comes from again our temptation is to go directly to the cave person that one person and try and convince them otherwise think about that peer group and that's another law of diffusion you're trying to create in that peer group. So it might be five people or six people and one of them's a laggard, you've got three who are the majority, you've got one early adopter and yourself. Um, embrace the early adopter, embrace the actual majority and start to create influence around them. I will be very clear that when it comes to people on the laggard side, the cave side, Performance management is a way of dealing with that. You know, sometimes you actually need to understand the unhelpfulness that that can create and create more of a VUCA world, right? It can actually create more volatility, more uncertainty, more complexity. Uh, so it's really important to understand you may need to deal with that from a performance management point, point of view. But remember, as soon as you get everyone else around them heading in a direction, Research shows, social science shows that they will either start to step in and, and fall in line or they will opt out themselves. All right, well, I'm not going to hold people up longer than I need to. You know, we've, we've pretty much covered the content for today. Really want to introduce those core concepts around your circle of influence, position of influence, and your direction of in influence. And Keep growing those. Your leadership styles come important. The courses on our academy are really good, especially the Inspiring Others course. Um, and I look forward to the next Lunch and Learn where we can actually start to unpack your next thinking around leading with influence, which is your trustworthiness. So thanks for joining us today. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Uh, if you got value out of that, please invite some others to the next one. Uh, if you've got any feedback for us, please connect to 
you know, anyone in, in our team here at Barclays, give us some feedback. It is our first one. I'm looking forward to growing how we're actually delivering these because uh, I want to make sure they're adding value to you who's putting your time aside to join us. And uh, if you have any other commentary about our academy or courses you would like to see on the academy, please look, let us know. Look forward to you joining us next time. Thank you.